Tedesco in 1980 when we finished 11th. And Rick, what are the aspirations of these four youngsters? Well, I spoke to the boys early this morning and they said they'd be happy with anything in the top 10, which would be a great achievement as we've never, as you said, finished in that position before. Well, it's up against a very, very strong uh, competition today from Europe who will dominate this event today, I'm sure. We've got uh, the three top-seeded countries from the World Championships in Vienna, and this is one of the sides. This is Austin. Say that uh, the USSR, with the new equipment that they've come here with, the, as we can see here, the Colnago racing frames, which uh, now seems to be flattened out for aerodynamic purposes, along with the disc wheels, which... Uh, are almost uh, standard equipment for any of the top teams. Well, the United States took out the medal in this event in 1984 because of the boycotts, but certainly uh, 72, 76 and 80, the Russians really dominating this event in recent years. It has been one of their specialties, the 100-kilometre uh, time trial. The East Germans really haven't had the same domination in this event as they have in a lot of the other cycling events. And uh, it'll be inter interesting to see how the East Germans go with the new equipment that they've got, uh, especially for the Olympics at Seoul. Well, here's the Italian team and one survivor from the gold medal side from Los Angeles in 1984. And that's Eros Poli, a, a seasoned campaigner, and will be leading this charge here for the Italians. They are the current world champions. Yes, Eros Poli has raced in Australia, uh, raced the Commonwealth Bank Tour two years ago. And as most Australian cyclists will know, he's a very tough customer. Well, we mentioned the, the dominance of the European countries. And this side has been knocked around a fair bit, though, uh, for various reasons. Yeah, the, the Italians had some problems with uh, the illegal drug uh, testosterone and have lost two of the last four men that were in the uh, world championship team from last year. Well, this course, 25 mile, uh, kilometres out, 25 kilometres back, and then uh, that's the halfway mark, and it starts all over again. And then we just saw the Dutch side come through there. Uh, I don't know whether that time will be all that competitive, Rick, uh, on this track. I wouldn't think so. One six, they'll have to go a lot faster on the very smooth track here at Seoul. We'll talk about uh, revelations. Uh, have a look at this. This will be the bike, the Kevlar bike, which will be used by... Uh, the world record holder, Mike Malcho, up in that uh, one kilometre time trial against Martin Vinnickman on Tuesday night. We're all looking forward to that run. Will that be goal to Australia? Well, I'd like to say uh, we could all be as confident as Martin is himself. And these, uh, these bikes really are an advantage, as you can see by that time. 57.55, uh, they're well on world record pace. That's an incredible advantage there by the, uh, the East Germans. 11 seconds, in fact, in front of their nearest rival. And yeah. The East Germans are actually seated sixth in this event, but uh, I'd say with that time, they'd be very hard to beat. Well, here's the French side coming through in third place uh, at the halfway mark, 58.7. 58 and they're just uh, a little over a minute behind the East Germans. So certainly the pressure being applied at the halfway mark by the East German side. It's not an old side either, Rick. No, they're a young side, uh, the East Germans. They're, um, and oh, actually, here's a turn up for the books. The uh, Canadians who started in front of the Polish team have been taken over by, uh, which is two minute difference for the, uh, from the difference from the start to the time that the next team takes off. So the Polish team have uh, put together a pretty tidy time as well, 58.06. Well, that's uh, the situation at the moment. At the halfway mark, we have East Germany in front of Poland and France. And uh, I just wonder whether the side here that we see from Russia, who finished second behind Italy in the World Champions last year, can make up ground over the la latter part of this race. you earlier, it was East Germany from Poland and uh, France in this 100-kilometre team's time trial. But the Swedes are certainly uh, throwing down the gauntlet. Well, certainly are. The Swedes would have to be the surprise packet of this race. This hasn't really been... Uh one of their specialties but they're performing admirably at this point they went through in the equal fourth time at the halfway mark and they're heading towards the finish line right now well let's watch their time the best time through at the moment is 202 35.7 just watch the suite where will they finish here now they're coming up towards the finishing mark really powering it out at the moment this has been a tremendous performance by this young team and let's just see as they come towards the finish line they come at this stage in top position, 159. That really is competitive. And here's the powering poles. The Polish team have already overtaken the Canadians, and they're heading towards the line. They look like they might actually finish faster than the, the Swedes who have already gone over the line. Yes, it's their time's going to be in the high 157s, just under 158. Yes, they've gone through in 157.54.2, which is the fastest time. Well, I can tell you, uh, Rick, uh, both those times, had that been in L.A., they would have been gold medalists on that performance. Only the two hours has been broken on uh, one other occasion. That was the Italian team in Los Angeles in 1984. This was the side that went around at 57.55 at the 50K mark, was still ahead uh, at the 75 kilometre uh, 75 kilometer mark at 127.56. The powerful East German side, they've never yet won a gold medal in this event. 
Let's see what they can do over the closing stages of the race. They really are powering it out at the moment. Well, these Kevlar bikes seem to have just uh, been the thing that the East Germans need. They look like they're really on, on line for a gold medal here. The, uh, the French team have uh, got, went through with the uh, halfway mark and third position, but uh, I don't think anyone can beat the East Germans if they can just keep that speed that they went through the uh, first 50 kilometres in. Well, the French side actually was still in third place at the 75k. Let's see as they go towards the line here at the moment. That's the time to beat on the left, 157, 47.7. The French really powering home over the concluding stages of this race. I think they're out of medal contention, actually. I think that uh, 159.7 around the 159.50 mark, uh, that won't be enough for a medal at these Olympics. Well, at this stage, they're in fourth spot, so their medal chance has disappeared. Pretty savage rate they've been running out there, too, uh, just over 50 kilometres an hour. Well, who have we got now? Here's the Germans, the East German side. And you'll see the last rider has just dropped off. There has to be three riders finish this race. The time of the last rider's back wheel is the time that actually is recorded as they go across the line. So there's not far to go for the East Germans. Well, that uh, rider there is Jan Schuer. But uh, as we mentioned, only three riders. The back wheel of the third bike is the, uh, is the mark that the final time is taken from. But the East Germans now really powering home. It's about 500 metres to go at this stage. Well, they were uh, silver medalists behind the Soviet Union back in 1980 in Moscow. I mentioned earlier they have yet to win a gold medal in this particular event. I just wonder whether Seoul 1980, on what is a pretty flat and very quick uh, course, uh, I think it's been tailor-made for these East Germans. Especially considering some of the equipment that they've turned up here with. Uh, these bikes uh, really are some form of uh, revelation, I think, for the, uh, the East Germans. The Kevlar material, very light. I, I was um, fortunate enough to have a glimpse of them down at the uh, bike track yesterday, and they're very light, very aerodynamic, and they can be the difference, I think, between a gold and silver medal in this event. Well, the time to beat at the moment is 157.54. And that's set by the Polish team. They were also silver medalists in... Uh, 200 minutes to go. This is unbelievable. Let's just see if they could do it now. The Germans, they are really coming to the fore here. Will this be gold to the East German side? With that uh, revolutionary Kevlar bike it is, the East Germans have won their first ever gold medal in this event, and that's a pretty uh, strong margin as well. You know, 6.5 seconds is not all that far over 100 kilometres, but in the, the way the sport's going these days, those little uh, hundreds and, and seconds in, in two hours are the difference between gold and silver medals. Well, their best ever performance was uh, silver medals in Rome in 1960, in Moscow in 1980 behind the Soviet Union, and uh, Juve Ampler there, one of the seasoned campaigners on the uh, European circuit and the world circuit. And this East German side of Ampler, Mario Kummer, Hake Landsman and Jan Schur. A very, very proud moment for the East German side. The congratulations there, and they look pretty happy. Well, I think they would be. This is a pretty tough event. It's uh, basically two hours on the road at full stick the whole way. There's, there is probably not really many tougher events in cycling. Get that. Been on the road.